Good afternoon. I'm here with Shangs, our head real estate lawyer. Shangs, do you want to take a moment and uh, introduce yourself for anyone who isn't familiar with you? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shangami Rajaratnam, but most of you may know me as Shangs. I, I've been with Access Law uh, from 2016 and have been involved in the real estate department since the beginning. Um, and yeah, here we are. Wonderful. So thank you very much, Shane, for taking a few minutes out of your very busy afternoon. Um, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to touch on a question that we're getting a lot from our real estate and mortgage partners um, because of what's going on currently with COVID. A lot of people have been reaching out to us and saying, look, can our buyers or sellers back out of a deal because of COVID? Could you give us the, could, could you shed some light on that question for us? Yeah, this is actually a great question. Like you've said, we've been receiving this question quite a bit. Um, the short answer is no. Um, an agreement of purchase and sale is a firm and binding agreement once both parties sign. Um, it is a firm and binding agreement. So the date that you schedule or that you sign that you're gonna close the transaction, that is the day that you are required, you will be required to close. And COVID-19 is not an excuse or reason to back out of a deal for either buyer or seller. Okay, that's, that, that's a great answer. So by way of an example, and to just push you a little further on this even, let's say for example, I'm a buyer. I've entered into an agreement of purchase and sale on you know, March 3rd before we really knew the extent of what was happening um, with this pandemic. And I went to, I, I've agreed to buy a house for a million dollars. Now everything that has happened has happened. And I believe that the house is only worth, you know, $800,000. In fact, the financing that I originally qualified or I thought I was going to be able to obtain, I no longer can obtain because lenders maybe have tightened their restrictions or whatnot. I've entered into this agreement of purchase and sale. So are you telling me I have to proceed even though I can't get the mortgage proceeds that I thought I was going to be able to obtain and I don't want the house anymore? Yes. I'm very sorry, Lena. <laughs> you are required <laughs> to close the deal as scheduled. Um, unfortunately, COVID-19 is not definitely, this is, these are unprecedented times and, um, you know, a lot of things are happening that no one thought would happen. Um, a lot of people are, you know, temporarily being laid off um, and they, at some, some of them are not, no longer qualified for a mortgage. Um, unfortunately, COVID-19 is not the only time someone is going to actually lose a job. Knock on wood, it doesn't happen, but you could lose your job at any point. Um, you are still required, however, to close your deal as scheduled um, because the agreement is firm and binding. Um, at that point, we could, you know, try to talk to the sellers and, you know, come up with some creative solutions. Um, but aside from that, um, you will be required to close the deal as scheduled. Okay. No, great, great, great answer, Shangs. And I think, you know, the, the principle here is that the, the, the risk in terms of the valuation of the property lies with the seller until an agreement of purchase and sale is executed in a sperm, at which point that shift risks to the buyer, the person who has entered into a binding agreement saying, I will pay you a million dollars for that property, $800,000 for that property, whatever it may be. At that point, anything that happens, the risk is firmly in the buyer's um, buyer's field. Now, a uh, quick question before we wrap this up and let you get back to your busy afternoon. Um, let's talk force majeure. This, this term has been thrown around. I think I'm getting invites to a webinar on it every other day. Um, and it, it just seems to be sort of a really hot topic. What I'd love to do is maybe give 30 seconds of clarity to people about what is it, whether it applies, any information that you might think is pertinent. Yeah. So force majeure clauses are usually um, in re reference to an act of God. So this typically does not apply in real estate transactions. Um, and in order for it to be, to come into effect, it needs to be included in the agreement at the time the agreement was drafted and signed. Um, so it's not something that could be included by way of an amendment or something like that. Um, it needs to have been included in the agreement at the time of signing. Um, and because this is not a clause that is typically included in a real estate transactions, it's not something that would apply to the situation at hand. Okay, perfect. So um, can, you give me, can you give us an example of what a force measure event might be? Now I'm asking a question that's sort of 
off script and it doesn't actually apply to what we do. I can actually jump in here and answer it myself. Um, but what we don't want is we don't want you guys turning around and putting these clauses into the agreement because they're not going to hold up. They will not apply um, to a situation like COVID. They would maybe apply to a situation like, you know, Earthquake. An earthquake that devastates Toronto and suddenly, um, I mean, use your imagination. Yeah. A huge flood, huge earthquake, that type of thing. It does not apply to this. It will not apply to this. Um, not a good idea to start putting it into your agreement. A lot of people have sort of um, tried to make it fit the scenario, but it doesn't. So I think bottom line is if you've entered into an agreement and you've gone firm, you are obligated to hold up your end of the deal. If you haven't, if it's still conditional, you may still have some wiggle room depending on what the condition is. Is that fair to say, Fangs? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Have a great afternoon, everyone, and um, we will talk to you soon. Bye.